channel member today and receive these benefits. Access to members only videos, access to private live streams on astrology and world events, a 15% discount on all my readings, private member communication with myself and others, participate in group polls. To join, click on the join button under the banner on our home page. All for $4.99 a month, that is $0.16 cents a day, and you can cancel at any Views expressed in the videos are my observation, analysis of events, persons based on principles of astrology. It's not my intent to predict, forecast absolute outcomes, only suggest how they may unfold. Nothing is set in stone. I could be wrong, but often I'm right. My desire is not to promote fear, only inform about what we see unfolding. It is our wish to prepare our subscribers for events that could affect them, their family, their goals, and their future, to help to prepare for what you may already feel suspect is happening, and to send a warning shot across the bow and raise a flag of concern. Our goal is to help, not hinder, in these perilous times, to inspire and offer possible direction, and to reveal that a greater plan and purpose are behind all that is happening. Eventually, we will see a brighter day. If you would like to show your appreciation for our work on these videos or this channel, and also the Knowing Whispers channel, you can always click on the word thanks at the bottom of all the videos. Hello everybody, it's Robert Cosmar, the Astrology of Life YouTube channel, the Knowing Whispers YouTube channel, and also the Astrology Network on YouTube. Today my video in essence is going to be called, I think, Putin and the Bomb. Here lately in the news with this war going on in the, in the Ukraine, there's been a lot of talk about the possibility that Russia or that Putin may resort to nuclear bombs at some point in time if things don't go the way that he would like them. So what I'm going to try to do in this video is to again show you the chart comparison between the United States and Russia. The date uh, for the Russian chart being 1921 and the USA 1776. Now, before I get heavily into these chart comparisons, I want you to understand that this video is not about uh, Putin or uh, Russia is going to bomb the United States with nukes. Um, the situation over in the Ukraine, uh, I'm going to just at this point put a question mark. But what I want to do here is, in the chart comparison here, is to bring in to the conversation okay, that I'm having with you this idea of the significance in Pluto between the USA chart and the chart of the Soviet Union. Because Pluto deals with nuclear energy. Okay? And if you remember the video that I did last week in this particular comparison here, I talked about the conflict in the two charts. The fact that both of these charts are full of conflict. Okay, We have Russia's Pluto is conjunct the USA's Jupiter, also the USA's Sun. Okay, This type of combination can indicate that there's a tremendous desire to control or to dominate. Okay, That the Soviet Union in its nature has in respect to the United States of America, that in the USSR chart we have the planet Eris, which represents strife and conflict, right on the seventh house cusp of the chart of Russia. And as I mentioned in the other video that I did, um, basically what that's saying is, is that Russia, in regards to others outside of them, Okay, have a very contentious relationship with just about everybody outside of them. Okay, now the other factors here is that we have the Sun, Saturn, and Jupiter in the 12th house. Okay, and I think I told you in the other video that I did was that this particular chart, 1921, for me anyhow, seems to represent the Russia that I am observing. Okay, astrologers may have different perspectives. And that's okay. But I think that this particular chart right here 
really shows the character and personality of Russia, of what we're seeing. The Pluto in the 10th house, domination, okay, control. And this really is their objective and goal. The secrecy involved in their behavior, the conflict that goes on with, with others. <clears throat> and the other thing too here, and that makes me wonder about the relationship between Russia and the United States is that the planet Eris in the chart of the U.S. is exactly an opposite to Pluto in the 10th house. Pluto in the 10th house of the USSR chart is, of course, control domination. And then this is stripe and conflict. Okay, so these two planets right here kind of sum up the underlying feelings that both countries have towards each other in regards to their philosophy um, and, you know, their political and military type of, of purposes and stuff. So, this particular combination of these two uh, charts are essentially saying that these two countries, if they were people, they would, they would be saying, you know, I would be saying that there's a lot of tension here, a lot of conflict, uh, a lot of frustration, okay, a lot of anger. And, uh, of course, we're talking here uh, mostly about Pluto's factoring in here in the chart of the Soviet Union. And Pluto does represent nuclear energy, nuclear fission, the bomb, if you want to call it that. The difference between uranium, or uranium, the difference between Uranus and Pluto is that Uranus rules uranium. Pluto rules nuclear fission, the bomb. Okay? Now... One thing I want to say before I leave this particular chart, too, is that there's a very strange similarity between the birth chart that is used of Vladimir Putin and this particular chart right here. In Vladimir Putin's birth chart, the Saturn and the Sun, and I think Jupiter, are also in the 12th house of that chart, and Pluto is in the 10th house chart except that he has Scorpio here on the Ascendant. So, kind of an oddity, an odd situation, but I'm sure that there is probably something significant there as well in terms of this particular chart, the energy of this chart, and also the energy of the person that we know as Vladimir Putin. Okay, let's move forward here a little bit. <clears throat> Briefly, I'm going to talk about this. This is a... Um, Basically, it is a graphic ephemeris, and it is showing over here on the right, it is showing the planets, the birth planets of Vladimir Putin, and then these are the transits. And the big thing here in this particular graphic ephemeris, okay, is to watch the movement of Saturn, okay? Saturn, at the early part of April, is going to directly oppose Vladimir Putin's Pluto, and it's going to do it once twice, and three times. This Saturn opposing his Pluto has to deal with all of the uh, countries that are standing against him economically, militarily. Okay, when you take a look at this particular chart right here with Saturn opposing Pluto, all right, this is a situation of uh, restrictions, limitations, in your desire to be in control to gain this power. So, right on through the end of this year okay basically depending upon how things evolve here between uh, the other countries in the world Vladimir Putin and the Ukraine he's going to be dealing with some very challenging odds that um, you know no doubt will have a tremendous impact on the decisions that he makes okay so keep that in mind there's more to be said here but I'll get into that possibly in another video okay all right, again, this is just kind of a breakdown of when these factors come into play, okay? Three times this year. This is from March 2022 to 2023, February. Saturn is going to see as Jupiter, okay, in March, in September, and at the end of November, all right? Again, Saturn is restriction. It is limitation. Jupiter is expansion. Okay, very simply, common sense, okay, this is an indication that his efforts to expand, okay, which is what he's trying to do, are going to be met with restrictions and limitations, no doubt, from other countries, okay. 
Now, this one here we have to take uh, and, and think about a little bit because of the fact we don't absolutely know for certain whether or not his birth time is 9.30 a.m., okay? Uh, this seems to be the chart that most astrologers use because of the fact that when you take a look at it and you see what's going on, uh, it very much matches what we see going on here. If, in fact, that chart, the um, uh, chart of Vladimir Putin, is correct, the Saturn opposing his midheaven is not good for his plans in regards to what it is he's trying to do, which is essentially reclaim the entire country of the Ukraine for the Soviet Union for all kinds of reasons. Um, this is saying essentially that things are not going to go very well whatsoever. And you can see there's a similarity here between Saturn opposing Pluto in April in the latter part of July or early August and also in the early part of January of 2023. Okay, tremendous resistance. Okay, and the other things that I wanted to point out here, something to be concerned about though, if he is able to persist in bullying the world essentially, he's going to be moving in in 23 with Uranus conjuncting his Jupiter. Okay, if you know what this aspect relates to, Uranus, the unexpected, Uranus, um, you know, uh, out of the blue type stuff, Jupiter, fortune, expansion, okay? Uh, this could be an indication that things have not gone the way that the rest of the world hopes that they'll go, all right? But we'll just have to wait and see how things develop through this year because he's got to make it through this year. And obviously there's going to be a lot of um, people that are against him on all levels, and uh, most likely at some point, the people in his own country could turn against him as they suffer for the consequences of what it is, you know, that he is trying to accomplish. Okay? And let's go forward here. All right. These are the progressions. And for those of you that know astrology, you know that progressions move slower than transits and they last longer. And there's two things to be noticed here about this particular uh, combination here of progressions. The 14th, which is tomorrow, is when his progressed Jupiter opposes his Venus. If Vladimir Putin had an astrologer, I would advise him, would have advised him prior to this, to hold off on trying to attempt to do what he's doing. Because it's not impossible that he could accomplish his objectives, but when you consider the factors of Saturn, the planet of karma, okay, and what it is doing in his horoscope, what he's trying to accomplish, it's opposing his Pluto. And then you have Jupiter here, you know, opposing Venus. This is a very impulsive type of, of um, energy in which a person can overextend themselves and, uh, and also in relationship with others, which is what we see going on. Uh, this is the effect of him choosing not to um, make wise decisions because of factors that he obviously is going to have to learn. In August, Mercury is going to oppose the moon by progression, okay? This is kind of a situation where, uh, to me anyhow, it would indicate that he's going to be going through a very emotionally disruptive period where his thinking and his feelings are not going to be settled calm his ability to feel like that he's confident in what's going on or his reaction to the results that he see going on because they're not the way he envisioned or fantasized they would be um, are causing him to, um, you know, speak and do things um, irrationally, maybe emotionally. Okay. And next. Okay. This is a gra graphical representation of the next year in his chart and it has to do with his goals and plans and also his state of mind his attitude these peak periods right here are periods where these two objectives seem to be working in his favor these particular graphical images represent a plotting of periods of time where planets are in favorable aspect to one another 
when you have periods here where you have a large spike, it means more conjunctions, sextiles, and trines are in force than the other times. And you can see here that uh, particularly at the period of time here in, uh, looks like maybe early June into July and then August going into September, that he will be feeling like he is accomplishing what he wants to do. It doesn't mean that he's not going to be accomplishing what he wants to accomplish. It just simply means that the um, results of those efforts are not going to be as apparent to the world or to him. And um, again, this is not an indication that he's going to just literally go into the Ukraine and, um, you know, control the whole country, you know, and go beyond the Ukraine. Um, but definitely the situation over there is, is, is dire. Okay, now let's go forward here to another chart. All right, this is kind of the, the focus. This is what really kind of got me um, interested in doing a particular chart here about Putin and about what's going on with him. This is an astrocartography map. And the thing that is significant about this, okay, is that this is the plotting of Vladimir Putin's horoscope upon the world, okay? And because where he was born, Pluto was close to the midheaven, the line that Pluto has in the astrocartography map goes right down through the Ukraine. In fact, it's about 50 miles from Kiev, all right? And there are also two parans. Now, parans are lines that go east and west around the world, okay, that have to deal with energies, astrological energies that are experienced in those areas depending upon what the planets are that are involved, okay? Now, going back to what I said when I was talking about the chart of the United States and the chart of Russia, Pluto rules atomic energy, uh, atomic fusion, okay, the bomb, so to speak. And again, as I said earlier, this is not a respecting that, but the indicators are, okay, that something of this nature could come into play if he makes the wrong decisions, the wrong choices, okay? Because again, <clears throat> What's the chances that he'd have Pluto on the Midheaven, 50 miles from Kiev, going right through the country of the Ukraine? These two parans here also are involved. Right here, you'll notice there's a little discoloration, a little darker green combination here. It's, it's a square rectangle. It says Venus and Pluto. This is known as a destiny crossing. Okay, this is when two planets are exactly conjunct one of the four angles in the horoscope. Okay, and when you have something like this, okay, uh, and the reason why they call it destiny crossing is because of the fact that in that particular location, okay, uh, somehow in a person's lifetime, an event of destiny will happen in their life. And of course, we're seeing that happening right now with Vladimir Putin, okay? The other thing to keep in mind here, Pluto in the Midheaven, in the Paran, there is Venus-Pluto, okay? And the combination of Venus and Uranus. Both Pluto and Uranus represent atomic fusion, atomic energy, okay? So again, <clears throat> without coming out and saying that he will use the bomb, I think I can say with an astrological certainty that the possibility that he could be very well tempted to do so, that, um, you know, he may be tempted to do other things as well. So have going through certain parts of the Ukraine here, Pluto Mars, a paran of Pluto Mars going through the southern part, okay, of the Ukraine. And of course that is a standard combination of planetary energies for combat, for war, for aggressiveness, and things of that nature. So, what am I saying? I'm saying that from the standpoint of the country Ukraine, the chart of Vladimir Putin 
Okay, there are factors here that could imply that the possibility could exist for something of a nuclear nature to happen if things completely got out of hand. Okay, I'm going to go to another chart here. All right. Now, this is a solely, again, this is a different looking at his particular chart, okay? And um, the thing that I wanted to point out here, oh, this is the transit, I'm sorry. This is the transits currently now to his natal chart, okay? Um, and what you'll notice here that's significant is that right here, okay, Saturn is going through all right, the fourth house, or it's on the fourth house right here, very close, okay, what does Saturn represent, it represents resistance, difficulties, challenges, karma, you see, and <clears throat> in this situation, while he is endeavoring to try to conquer this country, he is meeting world, um, you know, attempt to thwart his plans, he's being frustrated, in accomplishing what it is that he wants to accomplish. And uh, this is something which uh, no doubt will continue as these things, you know, unfold. And I progress chart, okay, through the Ukraine with Vladimir Putin's natal chart, okay. Here is Pluto in the Midheaven, about 50 miles from Kiev. The thing to be noted here by progression, there's a couple things here. There is Mars, by progression, is going through the Ukraine. Aggressiveness, okay? Fighting, fighting, war, combat, all right? We also have the midpoint of Mercury and Jupiter going on here, very close to Kiev, all right? And what this essentially is indicating is that all of this attention right now in the world is directed towards the Ukraine. Everybody's talking about Ukraine, all right? It's become the focal point, you know, of people's concerns about the possibility of World War, you know, World War III being started. We also have Jupiter here on the seventh house cusp running through here. Now, you might be confused by that because of the simple fact that uh, when you look at it in one sense, you might consider that that means good luck, good fortune, okay, in dealing with others. Uh, it could mean that he'll be successful in accomplishing his objectives. Um, it could be also that he has to deal with a lot of issues with foreigners because of that placement. Um, and it could also be the desire to expand, you know, behind what it is that he's attempting to do and uh, the situation in the Ukraine. Okay, and I think that's the last chart that I've got. So, again, to recap all of this. This is the chart of the U.S. and Russia. As I pointed out, there are a tremendous amount of, con of conflicting relationships between energies, planetary energies, all right? Uh, both of our countries essentially were born to be in conflict. This is what uh, these two charts here basically are saying to us. And then the Saturn situation, as I showed you here, uh, his Saturn opposing potentially the Midheaven, opposing Pluto, squaring Jupiter, meeting heavy resistance throughout the next year in his plans to do what he's doing, take over the country known as the Ukraine. And his progress chart, all right, his impulsiveness, unwise choice of timing to expand his, you know, his plans. Um, potentially, you know, emotional instability as things don't go the way he hopes they're going to. Um, but yet a steady process evolving throughout this entire year to where he has periods where things seem to go the way that he's hoping they'll go and then other times they seem to be um, stalled. And then lastly, getting into this chart right here, uh, with the destiny crossing point that I pointed out right here. Pluto represents nuclear fission, the bomb. Uranus represents uranium, a key element in nuclear fission. Okay? And the fact that this destiny crossing right here 
represents a very specific key point in time and space in a person's life where something of significance is going to happen. And again, for those of you that have been following the news, you know that that's what's happening right now, that Vladimir Putin has gotten himself into a war in which the vast majority of the world is against what he's trying to do. Uh, he has threatened, you know, the use of nuclear weapons, possibly. Uh, things are not have just a mess going on here. And we can only hope that in the process of how these things unfold, that nothing uh, brutally devastating occurs to um, bring more sorrow than what people have been going through the last couple of years. And finally, I also mentioned here down here the Paran of Pluto and Mars running through southern Iraq, or not Iraq, the southern Ukraine. Um, we're talking here about a very combative energy at this location. In fact, I think that a lot of the fighting that's been going on, where they have been successful in accomplishing things, uh, has to do with this southern part of the Ukraine as well. Okay, I think that's it. That's a lot. <laughs> All right, if you enjoy the video, please share it on the internet. If you're not a subscriber to our channel, we'd like to have you subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support the work we're doing, you can also become a member of the channel and um, uh, partake of some of the benefits of that. Uh, keep in mind that CJ and I have decided to do live streams again. All right. Uh, every month, the first Saturday of every month from 10 to 11 in the morning, we'll be doing an, ast an Astrology of Life live stream on astrology, current events. Uh, it'll be a one hour live stream first Saturday of every month from 10 to 11 a.m. And then the third Sunday, okay, the first third Sunday of every month from 10 to 11 in the morning, we're going to devote an entire hour to spiritual awakening, um, higher self knowledge, expansion of consciousness, and CJ and I will be sharing with you the things that we're being taught, the things that we're being given to help you to reclaim your own conscious unity with inside of yourself, with your own God. We trust and hope that you'll join us at that time. Okay? I want to thank those of you that make donations each month towards the work we're doing. It's deeply appreciated. Um, all of you that, you know, have stayed with us over the last four or five years, uh, we do highly respect and appreciate you being a part of this uh, channel these channels, all three of them actually, and we hope that, um, you know, you'll continue to do so, and uh, I think that's about it, uh, and oh, okay, if um, anybody is wanting to know what is happening to them in their world, in their life, you can of course contact me for an astrological consultation by emailing me at knowingwhispersastrologer, followed by the number one, at gmail.com. Okay. All right. From the love of my life, CJ, my spiritual partner, and from our super fur animal, Toby, I want to thank you, and I trust that this information is a benefit to you.